Good morning, everybody, on this wonderful Memorial Day weekend. Let's all stand together. Let's all stand together and let's turn toward the United States flag. Attention, salute, pledge. I pledge allegiance. Aren't you glad you have the liberty today to come and worship the Lord? Yeah. I'm glad we don't have to worry about worshiping the Lord right now, that we've been given that liberty and that freedom. Let's all sing, sing together the Star Spangled Banner. Good morning to my Cloud Springs Baptist Church family. I'm glad to be here on Memorial Day. I am thankful to be a citizen of the United States of America, and I am thankful for all the men and women who gave their lives to make sure that we could celebrate this morning. Uh, freedom, freedom came at a very high price. The freedom for my soul came for a very, at a very high price as well. I'm thankful to be a citizen of heaven this morning as well. Uh, above all else, I'm thankful for my eternal security in Jesus Christ. Let's open up in a word of prayer. And uh, we'll get back into our service. Father God, I thank you so much for the opportunity to stand here this morning. I thank you for being born into the greatest country in the world where we can worship you freely. A country that was founded on the principle of being able to, to serve you and to honor your word. God, I thank you so much for uh, the salvation that we have through your son, Jesus Christ. God, the fact that we are uh, citizens of heaven. Thank you so much for that awesome privilege. God, I do pray for the families that are hurting this morning from various tragedies around the world. God, those in our own country and those in other countries. God, I do thank you so much for the uh, men and women who gave their lives and um, who have now gone on before as a sacrifice for this country. And God, I pray that all that we do here today would honor you, that would, it would bring glory to you, that we would serve you with open hearts, open minds, and that we would seek your face in all that we do. God, help us to always shine light to the world around us. I love you, and I thank you for it all. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's all stand again, and we're going to sing some more patriotic songs. I know we all know people that lost their lives in battle, didn't, don't we? So let's just remember them today, remember them tomorrow, and let's just thank the Lord that we have the opportunity to live in such a wonderful country. Amen? Amen. God bless America, land that I love. Stand beside her and guide her through the night with the light from above. From the mountain 
Singers, a big round of applause this morning. You may be seated. Uh, you may be seated now. On this day of uh, uh, every year, we try to do something just a little bit special. South Springs Baptist Church has been doing this for years, and uh, we're continuing that to remember our veterans and those who have paid the price. Uh, Brother Charlie, it's a white one and a blue one, just in case you need to know. And I'm going to turn the turn the white one on, okay? And I'll leave both of them up here. But we want to recognize our veterans. And here in just a minute or so, Brother Charlie will also be showing a video. He went down to the town of Ringo, and we took a picture of the flags that are flying. They fly twice a year for us in the uh, city of Ringo, and I appreciate it. And uh, Here's a beautiful drive along Robin's Drive, Robin Drive, and uh, you can see all the flags. Uh, you'll be able to see some names on there and just a little bit of different people that uh, we've captured. And somebody said, did you capture them on purpose or by accident? I, I believe it's by and providence. I, mean, I think we got them because God wants to have them. And so we want to remember that. Brother Eddie, do we have children's church today? Okay. We're going to dismiss for children's church as we get ready for this, and uh, we will try to be as efficient as we possibly can. Children, you're dismissed for Children's Church at this time. And uh, thank you so much. At the end of church, we'll do all our regular business as far as uh, taking up our offering and stuff. Our kids are going to have a good time. Uh, I'll be bringing a short three-point message on Memorial and why, why, it's, why it is important here in just a few minutes. But Brother Jim McConaughey, a uh, retired uh, Army, uh, uh, retired Air Force. <laughs> Lord, afraid I'm going to get shot right here. Uh, retired Air Force, and I, and I know that because my brother served in the Air Force, and uh, Brother Jim always tries to make sure that we get all the names. Now, at the very end, if we did not call out the name of your loved one, it is by accident, and we will ask you at that time to stand and share the name of your loved one. But if it's been given to us, we're trying to be as faithful as possible to do this. You that are watching us online, we need to remember, and especially in times that we're living in, how God has blessed us here in America and how it has been through our armed forces that have done so much, men and women who gave their lives on the battlefield but also that uh, came back and gave their lives here in dedication to our freedom in America. Uh, we're living free today. I do not know how much longer that will be, but we are living free today. So would you put your hands together and welcome Brother Jim up here to our pulpit as he shares our service today.
every year it gets harder to get up those steps. <laughs> but but some age may have something to do with it. Uh, before we start the uh, uh, remembrance program, <laughs> I'd like to show you something. This is a star that from a field of a, the, the blue field of the American flag. There's an insa uh, 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 a writing on a card in the back of it, and I'll read it to you. I'm a part of an American flag. I have flown over home in the USA. I can no longer fly. The sun winds have caused me to become tattered and torn. Please carry me as a reminder of your service and that you are not forgotten. Then we uh, added Cloud Springs Baptist Church, 210 Cloud Springs Road, Fort Oglethorpe. We use this to recognize veterans and to invite them to our church. It's an outreach that's uh, going to be through the uh, WOM, Women on Mission. And uh, it's an idea that I picked up uh, 2019 and uh, when, I, when I first got my first one. Okay. Uh, if you're a veteran, please raise your hand and we're going to present you with one of these stars this morning. While he's doing that, Memorial Day started out to be Decoration Day. Started somewhere in the South, and there's about uh, eight states that claim to be the first. But I like to think that maybe Georgia was the first. And uh, uh, but later on, it was de designated as May 30th as the day that we'd recognize this. Uh, this uh, ceremony that we're having uh, started with, uh, I think, I like to believe it was uh, Union uh, and, and uh, uh, Civil War heroes going to the graveside and laying flowers, and they call it Decoration Day. Now, some states still call it Decoration Day before because they want to honor their families. Okay. They, somewhere between 1863 and 1868. In 1868, uh, it was declared a, 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 a holy day uh, by a general who signed it, signed it into law. This was not a national holiday until 1971 and became a national holiday. Okay, we're going to... I forgot my list right now. The first branch of service that America had was the Navy, and I've asked a, a disabled veteran to come help me read the names of the first group. Bruce Angus, Harry Angus, Jerry A. Sarton, Raymond Gross, George Blevin, Bob Anderson, William Robinson, Leonard Campbell, W.E. Blackman, Bill Lewis Sr., Ted R. Mortimer, Sr., Kenneth H. Clark, Carl Gass, Ralph Engel, Sam Sharp, Edward Kinsey, John Hayes, Fred Ray, Bob Clark, William Taylor, P.J. Cooney, Bill Duncan, Bill Allen and William Howe. For the Marine 
Marine Corps, we have William A. McConathy, Maynard Stevens, Ella Arp, Kenneth Parrish, and Alan Pursley. Army, Army's a long list. Jimmy Plumley, Raymond Snyder, I.J. McBriar, Fred Gass, Ralph Engel, James Pierce, John Ellison, Claude Curtis, Raymond Capehart, Ronald Howey, Gregory Hayes, Louis, Louis Kilgore, Earl Locke, Clyde Brown, Green Lawson, Jeff Rogers, John Dean, Harold Dean, Quentin Blevins, James Haney, Charles Gardner, Frank Euler, J.C. Lawrence, Ben Cockwell, Lamar Smith, Charles Brown, Melvin Bowers, Wayne Locke, Clyde Gass, Reed Haney, Warner Huey, Carl Flynn, Earl Ayart, Charles Ray, James Greer, Lawrence Kofritson, Willard Pursley, Thomas Privet, Max Duncan, Sonny Engel, Charles Gardner, John Gass, K.D. McCurry, Shorty Guerin, Douglas Blair, Dennis L. Kirby, David Newton, uh, Mike Arnold, James H. or Buddy Timmons, Melvin Sperling, uh, Melvin Scott, Luke Miller, John Mons, K. Will, uh, Whitlow, Herman Coulter, Sam Johnson, Burl Butler, Alan Newton, Joe Perkins, Jerry Mahoney, uh, Desmond Doss, he was a local hero, David Dean, Henry Davis, uh, Lon Howard, Robert Smith, Claude Curtis, Charles Humbley, Dale Davis, Frank Euler, James Timmons, James Lanier, Derby Brewer, Jerry Maroney, James Lanier, uh, Tracy Scott Sr., Quentin Bain, Joe Butcher, Burl Butler, Hugh Sterry, Clyde Orr, Junior McDerris, Melvin Bowers, Bud McBriar, Pete Brown, Raymond Mitchell, Lamar Dale, and W.L. Whitey Cantrell. From the Air Force, we have Robert McConathy, Jim Bushlon, Thomas Duckett, Charles Eskew, Bob Sargent, John Parker, Floyd Hydman, David Gardner, Claude Carr, Jim Rogers, Ronald Boday, David Pro Proctor. And from, we have one Merchant Marine, Arthur McConathy. Now, this list has is, is gotten pretty kind of long. I would like to ask you to do something for me. Every year it grows by about, about a dozen names. I would like you for you to help me condense this down to church members and church members' families. And we'll leave the list up here. All you need to do is draw a line through the name, okay? Uh, because I'm, I'm afraid in the next few years it'll be much longer. And I, I, this is a privilege and honor to get to do this today. Did he miss any names that we should have repeated? Did he miss any names? Richard Allman. Brother Allman, we, uh, I love Brother Allman. He was always brightly dressed, and he loved his country and served greatly. Yes, ma'am. 
Clifford Stewart, Howard Johnson. One was in the Army, one's in the Navy. If you will make sure we get that added to our list at the end. Yes, ma'am. Roy, Roy Edward Houghton, okay, in the Army. Make sure we get that on our list before, before this day's over. <laughs> anyone else? Did we miss anyone else? Yes, ma'am. Okay, two brother-in-laws. Okay. Robert Blair, Kenneth Shelton. We lost in, and you've lost three in the last two years. Okay. All right, we'll get them back in there. We'll make sure we get them again. Yes, ma'am. Brother, brother, son, we. Got him. Yes, ma'am. Your grandfather, Mr. Anderson. Okay, he was in what branch? Army. Okay, we'll remember that. Someone else. Yes, ma'am. Your your dad, Mr. Gass, and your brother, Mr. Gass. Uh, uh, got both of them. We'll just make sure we get these. We're trying to we're trying to get this list as active and as correct as possible. Thank you for the service. Yes, ma'am. James Stevens. Okay, U.S. Army. That is your your husband, James Stevens. And so we remember him. Anyone else? Carl Archer. Yeah, just just past last, right? Army. And so. Uh, we, we uh, remember that. Anyone else? All right, we're going to redo this list and get it as close and as correct as humanly possible, uh, realizing that we still are dealing with humans, okay? So we have to do that. If you appreciate each and every one of these men and women, and if you're thankful, why don't you stand and give a round of applause? We have uh, enough of these stars. If you know a veteran, come get one to present to them. Uh, don't be bashful about how many you take. We have about 150 right now. Uh, I had s several helpers. Of, I was asked not to mention names uh, because I, I couldn't get all this done myself. Uh, so I want you to, uh, to take them to... People that you know. All right. Thank you, Brother Jim, and I appreciate that so very much. And how many think Brother Jim looked good in his uniform today? <laughs> I enjoyed that. I enjoyed that. You turn to Joshua chapter number four. Turn to Joshua chapter number four. Now, in the next couple, three weeks, and this is one thing that's going to help us in this, uh, what we did today. Um, we're going to start talking about our gifts in church and how God has gifted us and what we can do and how we can help. And uh, we're going to revamp and do our list of veterans and all this. We want to do this. We want to be exact with it. It's hard. It's difficult. We can't remember. We don't have a database here. It is just written down, and we type it, and we hope that we capture them all. What we will do is fill out a fix a form that you will fill out and tell us about your loved one a little bit. Uh, that you can. It, it's not has to be specific, but is that they passed away, what branch they served in, uh, and things like this. And we're going to be doing that in the next, all summer long, we will be doing things to help us get better organized in these areas. And so some of you and your giftedness is going to be able to help us. Next Wednesday, this coming Wednesday, all those that would like to help me one Wednesday morning about 10 a.m., stuff envelopes, some of you. Uh, ladies had volunteered to come help stuff envelopes at 10 a.m. If you'll meet me here, 
Uh, I'll be here, but if you'll meet me here, we'll get you down in one of our Sunday school classrooms. We'll pray, and you'll help me stuff about 100 envelopes, and hopefully uh, we'll be able to start something good from that. Brother Jim, thank you for your uh, faithfulness to this uh, ministry and faithfulness to that. Thank you, each one of you. You may have not been in the service, but you were in the service because your loved one was in the service. You had to serve. You gave of yourself by giving of them to give us the privilege to be able to do what we're doing today. And we are so grateful and so thankful. Memorial Day is the building of a legacy. And this country, and I love what Brother Dalton prayed at the beginning of our service, it was built with the idea of religious freedom, a legacy. Now, in studying the Constitution, the preamble, the Bill of Rights, you will notice that there's a human element there, but it's always calling on a divine individual. The human element is us. How many of you are human this morning? Say amen. We're living in earth suits. Can I tell you, you may not realize this, and I may be the first one that busts your bubble today, but you're not perfect. Now, how many of you are shocked? Preacher, I thought I was perfect. I, I, I know I was perfect. I love how some people just try to barely hold their hand. I love it. But we're not perfect. And the further we get, get away from the original starting point, usually, now listen to me, usually we become worse, not better. And so we must remember that. When they founded this country, they strive for a more perfect union. The idea was that the places they were coming from, and most of it was from Great Britain, we've got to understand that, they said that we're not a perfect union, we're under a king, and we don't feel like that's the right union or the way it ought to be. I'm not going to get into all the political parts of that, but what I do want you to know, it stated there that it was a desire to have a more perfect union. The issue and the problem is, since the day that we signed those commitments, we started walking away from that which is more perfect. You see, if God is not our founder and our cause and our reason, then we are headed in a wrong direction. And we must understand that. We must grab that in our hearts and hold on to it in such a way that it makes a difference. I know that you feel like and I feel like our country is being torn apart. 19 precious children this week lost their life. And there will be a legacy on the reason they lost their life. There will be a legacy. Two teachers, one of the husbands of one of the teachers died of a broken heart after his sweetheart had been killed. The legacies that we are tearing down, we need to build up, and the legacies that we're going to have are going to be legacies of teardrops and heartaches. We need to remember that we're called to build a great legacy in America. Not only in America, around the world. And me and you must do what we possibly and what we can each and every moment of our lives to build up a legacy, to build up what is right. How many of you feel sorry for your grandchildren that are growing up now? Your great-grandchildren, if you are so blessed. How many of you know that death does not scare me? Living scares me to death, if I can use that terminology. 
and yet I want to leave a legacy that is worth remembering and worth having in our lives. Joshua has taken over as command of the children of Israel. Moses has died, and now things are changing. So right quickly, I'm just going to give you three points. I'm not going to read all the scriptures. We're simply going to go to the scriptures that we need this morning. I will read verse number 6, Charlie, if you'll put that up. It says in Joshua chapter 4, verse number 6, And this will be a sign among you when your children ask later, What do these stones mean? Now I'm going to stop there for a minute. How many of you have ever driven by a cemetery? We all have. We visit them. We go there on occasion. If our loved ones are gone on to be with the Lord, we still go by the cemetery. Just the last place we were with them for a few minutes and we go by. And if you're like me, I say these words. I know my mom's not there. I know my dad's not there. But I say, hey, miss you. Just want you to know today, God, will you tell them that I dropped by just for a visit? Those stones, they have many different words on them. We have some old cemeteries in our county, in our part of the country. <laughs> I remember years ago pastoring a church and they had a huge cemetery. I was always telling people, they said, how many people are on your church grounds? I said, well, on any given Sunday there's 1,490 folks there. And they go, oh, preacher, that is awesome. I said, yeah, but 1,200 of them are dead. The cemetery was in front, it was in back, it was to the right, it was to the left. We were landlocked by a cemetery in a mountain. We put up lighting in our cemetery. i got to tell you this. We put up lighting in our cemetery and made it nice where people could drive through. And we were actually trying to protect the stones from vandalism I got a call from a lady from Ohio when she had been down to visit and she said preacher can I ask you a question I said yes ma'am what is it she said I noticed you put new lighting in the cemetery I said yes ma'am we bought it we purchased it we put it up there she said but you didn't put no lighting in the old part of the uh, cemetery I said well ma'am I said uh, it's right next to some houses and we're trying to keep the light and the light we put on the hill is flooding down to the valley and it works she says, well, don't you think those people buried down there need light too? I said, well, no, ma'am, I really don't think they do. I said, I don't think they're reading anything or looking at anything. But those stones mean something to people. In some of the oldest cemeteries that I visit, and I've got this habit, I do like to walk through the cemetery and think and talk and communicate not with the dead I'm talking to the living Jesus Christ but I love to read the stones but I've noticed places where there are stones and there's just simply a huge rock and it's placed there and I stop for a minute and I'll think well whose loved one is this and what happened is it a baby is it a grown-up is it a family over in the valley brother Eddie there's a little old Presbyterian church it's mostly closed up now on the hillside and behind there is whole families buried because of the yellow fever over a hundred years ago came through the valley and whole families were buried in one place and simply a stone was put there because so many families were dying there was not a stone maker in verse number six it said this shall be a sign among you when your children ask you later what do these stones mean so number one, right quickly, as I get to my text, remembering the facts. That's what a stone does. Now listen, the children of Israel have been wandering in the wilderness because of their sin and their failure to go into the promised land. Can I tell you in America that we are suffering today because of our failure to remember 
how God has brought us about. We do that because we get too proud and too ungrateful in our lives. In verse number 8 of Joshua chapter 4, So the sons of Israel did exactly as Joshua commanded them, and they took up twelve stones from the middle of the Jordan. From the middle of the river they took up twelve stones, just as the Lord spoke to Joshua, according to to the number of the tribes of the son of Israel. Now listen. And they carried them over with them to the encampment and put them down there. This was a direct and obvious and visual mound of stones. Now how many of you know they didn't pick up a gravel, they didn't pick up a pebble, they picked up a stone, something they had to put both arms around and to carry. It represented their family tribe. How many of you have ever been to a cemetery and seen a family plot? They'll put stones around it. And they'll put grass. They'll put chairs. They'll put seating. They want others to recognize this is our family. Joshua, directed by God, was told to get these stones, and very large, very heavy stones, things that had never been touched by human hands, before and there's a reason they took them out terry from the midst of the river now how many of you know when you get around no stone it's in a river it's muddy it's stuck and you have to work to get it free and get it out but they took these stones it was to be a reminder they took them out of the river but it was a reminder of how God and God alone had brought them safe thus far. Remember, they were in the wilderness and God took care of them. God fed them. God watched over them. When they were hungry, he sent them ravens to feed them and angel food. When they were thirsty, Moses was to speak to the rock and yet he hit the rock out of anger and bitterness. God gave them water in the midst of a desert, gave them a cloud by day and a fire by night to lead them. He said, I want you to put up these stones on the other side of the river so your children will ask the question, what's this all about? What are these stones, Mom? What are these stones, Dad? What are these, Grandmother? Why are these stones right here? If they ask you, make you think and ask you, have you to ask the question, what does these things mean? What does it mean that a church sits on the corner of 210 Cloud Springs Road and has a cross out there and has stained glass windows and we have a sign out front telling what we're about? What do those things mean? They mean there is a legacy to be carried on. Those stones were untouched. They were not marked by man. They were about the incredible, incredible miracle that God had provided for them crossing over. Our military power is not the reason America is free today, guys. The reason America is free today is our great God and King. Too many of us do not understand we are not great because of the power we have. We are great because of the God we serve. And yet today that is being diminished in such a way that this nation and the end of time will not even be recognized in the holy book of God's word. Because we are leaving the foundational principles of the gospel. Not of America, but of the gospel. You need to understand it's a supernatural hand. It's the providence of God that America has stood as long as she has. I remember when in 1960 we began to say God did not deserve to be in our schools. And look where we're at today. We don't want God in Congress. And look where we are today. Our military chaplains today have to be extra careful in how they speak. They cannot speak plainly, but they have to make sure they speak righteously, but yet not come under the condemnation of violating somebody's rights. 
God help America. Our military power is not enough to destroy the enemy. It takes the supernatural hand of God and His protection to take care of us. Number two, those stones were a reflection of faith. A reflection of faith. Many of the tombstones I read, and I love this, they'll say things like, married 50 years. We want to check that off, you know, and say, what a great thing. Others will say, Jesus called, and they answered. Others will say, sleeping in the arms of God. One I read recently said, faithful through the end. I like that one. Faithful through the end. It says in verse number 9 of Joshua chapter 4, Then Joshua set up the twelve stones in the middle of the Jordan. Now listen, we have twelve stones outside the Jordan. We have twelve stones now being set up in the Jordan. Now how many of you, how many of you understand I can see what I can see, but I cannot see what I cannot see. Do you understand that? I can see the stones out of the Jordan, but the ones in the Jordan, I cannot see. Let us read the rest of the verse. Then Joshua set up twelve stones in the middle of the Jordan and placed where the feet of the priest who carried the Ark of the Covenant were standing. And listen to this statement. And they are there to... This day. <laughs> Y'all don't get it. They are there till this day. Well, now, preacher, now, now hang on here. Uh, when they was writing the book of Joshua, they were still there during the book of Joshua. I want to tell you something. If, if my God can hold this world in suspension, in space, don't tell me that those 12 stones have been moved. When God said, put them there. Put them right there. They're there. We may not know where they're at. We may not see them ourselves. But I promise you one day, if we want to go back and watch the video of history, God will say, let me show you something. There's those 12 stones. The marker that said, do what I say. Follow me and I'll make a great nation out of you. We will see those stones. This phrase is often overlooked. It's neglected. We don't even pay attention to it. There's 12 stones under water. What does that mean? How many of you, by testifying, by saying amen, if it had not been, been for the unseen hand of God in my life, I would not be here today. There's a lot of things I cannot see. There's a lot of things, Brother Jim, I cannot understand. I don't know how God fits it all together, but He does. He does. Joshua was showing a reflection of his faith. Most of, most of us want to leave the details alone. We just want to see the big things done. It takes the details to get the big things done. I want to tell you something. If you came here today and you wasn't prayed up, ready to come to service, God help you. You need to pray up before you come to church. Preacher, I'm here for you to get me right. I'm not going to get you right. I can't get you right. What will get you right is when you get along with God in your prayer closet and say, Oh, God, help me to be what I need to be. We need to do that. God's unseen hand would continue to guide the children of Israel no one would be able to see. No one could see that testimony under the rocks, in the mud. Nobody could see that testimony, but it is a testimony of how good God is. God promised them in chapter number 1 of Joshua and verse number 5 that he would never leave them, nor would he ever forsake them. Do you know this? Our faith is also something we cannot see. But how many of you would say amen today? He is working in me. His power is in me. His love is in me. I know that I'm born again because Jesus is in me by the gift of the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen. amen. That's the unseen. Number three, real quickly. It's a reinforcement for the future. Listen. 
because of all those graves that I go by and I see. Oh, preacher friend, there's a little church on Old Highway 2 in the south end of our county. Every once in a while, I'll just stop. If I have a moment, I'll just stop and I'll walk up to the cemetery in the back of it. About once a year, maybe twice at max. Got a preacher friend buried in there, and I just, I just go by for a minute because it meant a lot to me. But I was walking through there the last time last fall, and all of a sudden I come up on this grave, and there's a four-bird colonel buried back there. And I, I kind of stepped back for a second. Four-star colonel, you don't know what a four-bird colonel is, but that's just, what, uh, just another way of saying it. And I looked, and a four-star colonel. So found out a little bit of history on him. Grew up in that community. Loved his community. His great-great-grandparents donated part of the land where the church sits. It's a little church. One whole 50 people. <laughs> but he's buried by there because it meant something to him. Listen. When I see those stones, it reminds me that somebody paid an ultimate price for me to have the freedom to stand here today to share the gospel with you. To be able to go online. Man, our guys worked so hard to get us online. And, and I'm going to be honest, I fought it for a long time. I wanted people to come to church. And God says, well, if they ain't going to come, what are you going to do? Found out, didn't we? So we put it online. We're on Facebook, and Robin's telling me we reached 700 people last week. Those stones remind me that there's a future to be had. There's a future that we need to realize that God is wanting to do greater and more wonderful things. I thank God for what we have here on this street corner. But this street corner is not the only place we serve. We come here corporately. We come here together to worship in groups and in, in congregation and small cells and in Sunday school and youth meetings and children's meetings. We leave this place to serve the community. Let them know what love looks like. Let them know what hope looks like. Let them know we stand here as a monument to the goodness and the greatness of God. Verse 14 of Joshua chapter 4 said, On that day the Lord exalted Joshua in the sight of all Israel. On the day that he put the 12 stones outside the river and the 12 stones in the river. And he made these two monuments. We've got a past. I want you to know that. We've got a great and grand and glorious past. Some people gave all they had, did all they could to help a church be on this street corner. We've got a present structure right now, a monument to the glory of God. Tell them where the church is. Say right there at the cross street. I said, and if you don't get that, it's the cross street. And I'll punch him in the side. It takes the cross. Without the cross, we have no hope. Without a Savior, we have no hope. On that day, the Lord exalted Joshua in the sight of all of Israel, and they reverend him as they had reverend Moses all the days of his life. Let me ask you a question. Do you remember a time... When the church was revered by the community. You remember that day? Can I give you just a, a little picture of it just for a minute? And I can tell you when it happened. In the early 60s. I remember we had a country church south end of our county. Nellie Head Baptist Church. Where I grew up most of my life. Boy, howdy. There was never anything thrown out on the ground. You wouldn't have found a beer can anywhere. You wouldn't have found any of that. Late 1968, I remember walking up and finding beer bottles on the porch. Now, folks, that was an outward example. 
the outside world said the church didn't matter. The problem was it was on the inside of the church too. Listen to me. It was on the inside of the church too. I remember being in a church service in the first quote-unquote hippie, and I'm just going to use that terminology, okay? That's what we called them, long-haired, holes in the pants, and traveling from here to there in the late 60s, early 70s. And I watched them escort that individual out of the church. And I'm going, wait. Jesus died for them too. What's our legacy going to be at Cloud Springs Baptist Church? We all only want them that look like us and act like us and walk like us and talk like us. God help us. Well, that's all we want. Some of them are going to be rough around the edges. They're going to be different. But all the children of Israel that walked by those stones, they said, what does that mean? Everybody that drives by Cloud Springs Baptist Church that does not know God, that does not love God, that hates Christianity, I want them to remember this monument of a place that where they can sense the love of God when they pull up on the parking lot. Because we love one another so much. So much. Our history is over with. Our present age is being committed today. Our future looks bright in the hands of God, not in the hands of us. When the children of Israel established the value of a legacy, when they built that monument up and said, this is the time we're going to make the difference, and they began to follow the leadership of God, God began to bless the nation. We're going to start working on our legacy very hard here this summer, this fall. We need to be encouraged more and more each day, don't we? Hey, can I say something to y'all just for a minute? I love you. thing I wouldn't do for you. And yet I am so limited in what I can do. But I want to promise you what I do is this. I get on my knees and I ask God to bless you and use you and strengthen you and heal you and touch you and guide you and direct you and protect you I ask God to send every blessing that he can possibly send your way. I ask him to send it and send it and send it and send it and send it. That's all I can do. And love you. And love you. All I can do is love you for you and beg God on your behalf and cry for you. Brother Jim Sparks in the hospital had surgery yesterday. He's going to have to have more surgery today. And I'm just saying, oh God, touch Jim. When I tell you I've been in the altar praying for you, it's because I've been in the altar praying for you. That's all I can do. And love you. I'll do my part if you'll do yours. So you over here, why don't you tell that bunch over there? They need to hear it. On the crown of three, say, I love you. But don't let it be with voice only. 
you to be this hard. Don't let it be just with words that come from our brain, but words that come from our soul. Because I guarantee you there's some graves we can go by today where they gave all they had because they loved us and they didn't know who we were. They fought in the war. They fought in the army. They did everything they could do to give us the freedom that we have today. We owe it to them as a legacy to love. On the count of three, look at them. Pick you out somebody. Go ahead and look. You need to look. You've got to pick out them. On the count of three, say, I love you. One, two, three. Somebody just says they love you. They look you right in the eye. And they said they love you. With all our hiccups, all our heartaches, they love me. They're building a legacy at Cloud Springs Baptist Church saying, I love, I love, I love on the count of three. Y'all go ahead and look that way. Pick you out somebody. I guarantee you they need some loving. On count of three, say, I love you. One. Boy, they love you so much they're getting an early start. Amen? One. Two. Three. We can develop greater leaders. We can develop more blessed people. We can develop stronger Christians. We can develop greater courage by loving one another in such a way that we build a living legacy that changes Cloud Springs Baptist Church and changes all eternity. Because we're not going to stay the same. We're going to build upon the solid foundation of the Lord Jesus Christ. We need to be more grateful. We need to be more thankful. We need to be more loving. We need to be more kind. We need to be more considerate. Here's my question. If you want to be a part of that, who's going to be the first one to come to the altar? Say, I want in on that. I want to be a part of that. I want that in my life. And I want that in my church. Who's going to be first? Who's going to be first? Who's going to come and say, I'm going to help build a legacy at Cloud Springs Baptist Church? We've got a good foundation. We've got a good path. We need to go forward. We need to march forward that we are making inroads in the lives of individuals and groups and people and youth and older, all in between. We're going to make a difference. We're going to leave no stone unturned. We're going to make sure we build that living legacy at Cloud Springs Baptist Church. I know some can't come and kneel. I understand that, but I'm going to ask you to bow your heads and pray and pray with a passion. Pray with a desire. Listen, we need to do this for your grandkids and for your great-grandkids and for your family and for your children that are not in church and for your loved ones that are not where they need to be. We need you pray. It takes each one of us. Us that have very little education to the one that has the greatest education. From the one who is weak in strength to the one who is strong and powerful because the vitality of a young body. We're building a legacy. Will you be a part of it? Will you help us achieve what God wants us to achieve? Will we see families put back together? Will we see families come together? Will we see the church strengthened? Will you be a part of that legacy? Will you do it? Father, thank you for these that have come. 
Lord, thank you for those that served in our military, that gave their life on the battlefield, and those that have passed since that day spending and giving of their time to our military. Father, thank you for each one of them, what they mean to our lives. I can stand here today in a free country right now because they gave and gave and gave and gave and gave. Father, we want to make that difference because they gave, because you gave, that we now want to give wholly of ourselves and have this legacy the right way. Father, for those that are watching, I ask you to bless them. I ask you to use them, guide them, direct them in each and every way that you possibly can. Father, I pray that we'll not forget this day. And tomorrow, Father, on Memorial Day, the last Monday in May, at 3 p.m., as I was reading about this day, that at 3 p.m. we'll take that solemn moment and just stop wherever we're at, whatever we're doing, and tell you we're grateful for each one of those men and women, those that are serving on our armed forces today and are in harm's way, protect them. God, I pray for those that lost their life tragically this week. We remember them. Father, help us to be what you'd have us to be. In the name of Christ, we pray. We all said together.